I invite you to turn to the book of Ephesians. While you turn to chapter 5, we give thanks to God for the ministry of the choir, for our musicians, and for our ushers. Thank God for you in this house. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5, I'll begin reading at verse 15. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, and understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to share with you this morning three steps to a better new year. Amen. Three steps to a better new year. Let us pray, God, Holy Spirit, speak to us and through us. Let the words of my mouth and the of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. John was at a New Year's Eve party, standing, listening to the music, and holding in his hand his favorite beverage of choice. Twelve-year-old Scotch, single mom. No good friend would have been Johnny Walker. Could have been Chevy Regal. Well, could have been when Ken Glenn lived. I don't know what friend it was. But as he was standing there holding his Scotch and saying his wife, Mary Lou approached him. Reminding her husband, I thought you made a New Year's resolution to quit drinking. Well, uh, he said, I'm in the process of quitting. <laughs> right now, I'm in the middle of phase one. <laughs> phase one, Mary responded. Yeah, laughed Josh. Phase one, I quit buying. <laughs> Here are some typical New Year's resolutions. Spend more time with family and friends. Get physically fit. Amen. Amen. Tame that bulge. Mm. Enjoy life more. Learn something new. Help others. Get organized. These are resolutions people typically make. Well, Start with a preacher in the middle of the week. And I asked him what he was going to preach on Sunday. He said he didn't know. He said he had to wait for the mood to strike him. Yeah. I want you to know that poor discipline. Yeah. Well, you ought to at least have some idea, some plan, something. Amen. I heard it said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Mm -hmm. And if you wait for the mood to strike you, you'll never write a sermon. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that all these typical resolutions had nothing to do with spiritual improvement? Well, mm -hmm. Or that God was not included in any of them? Mm -hmm. That's the way it is for many of us. We don't include God in the picture of our lives. Let me suggest to you that he should be included in every aspect of our lives. Family, children, work, play, pleasure. In every area of our lives, God belongs. And so as we navigate our way into 2020, let me share with you three steps for making the new year better. In the new year, we must be careful. In the new year, we must be thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And in the new year, we must be thankful. Amen. First of all, in the new year, we must be careful. Our text says, be very careful then how you live. Yeah. Not as unwise, but as wise, 
making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Well, be careful in our living. Be careful in the way that we live. Be careful and be wise. Be careful with your time, which is God's time anyhow. Don't contribute to evil. Be wise. Seek the Lord in all things. Every day and in every way. In other words, stop living for yourself. Stop living for God. What you talking about, Reverend? I go to church every Sunday. I pay my tithe. I stop living for yourself. Start living for God. You say, I'm not that kind of person. I'm faithful. I serve God every day. Stop living for yourself. And start living for God. You see, we live for ourselves and we make plans and we don't include Him in it. Amen. We live for ourselves and we decide to do something and we never consulted Him. Steve Rose's catalog of self induced injuries reads like something out of a horror movie. He had a fractured skull, torn rotator cuff, shattered fingers, broken wrists, fractured elbows. Torn muscles, sulfuric acid burns, self stabbings, multiple broken noses, and as of last month, a ruptured tendon in his ankle. All of it perpetrated on himself. I didn't trip or anything, says a 46 year old patient from Madison, Wisconsin. She said, I was just walking down the hall in a hurry. And I went around the corner, and suddenly I felt like somebody hit me in the ankle with a baseball bat. In a hurry. Stress. She sped down the hallway, turning the corner so abruptly that she caused a, a, a stress, acute stress fracture in the ankle. Brothers and sisters worried, hurried, multitasking. And stress, you might call them the four horsemen of the accident problem. All right. Well, stress is such a huge factor when it comes to accidents. Oh, yeah. In fact, the stressful times in which we live was recently linked to the increase in traffic fatalities by researchers from the University of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know we are all vulnerable when it comes to accidents. Oh, yeah. But obviously, some are more prone than others. Hurry, worry, multitasking, and stress lead to accidents. And the same is true in the spiritual realm. We are not properly focused in life. If we're not properly focused in life, we will suffer for it. Most of the time, we are far too worldly or materially focused than spiritually focused. Amen. Let's be honest about this. We are not as spiritual minded as we should be. Well, we are far more earthly and worldly minded. Colossians chapter 3 tells us that we should be what we should be focusing on. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above and not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden in Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, you will then also appear with him. In November of 2009, Toyota had a recall. The corporation said it would replace the accelerator pedals on about 4 million recall vehicles in the United States because the pedals could get stuck in the floor mat. It was an expensive and costly fix and it left an ugly stain on the country company's reputation. But brothers and sisters, perhaps we need a recall well, in regard to our lives because we don't always function properly. Sometimes we even get out of hand and do crazy things. No matter how good we are, sometimes we mess up. We need to be more careful and use our time more wisely for Christ. 
delivery man was on his way to deliver a computer. And as he drove down the road, he came to the corner where he needed to turn, and there was a sign that read, Blocks, do not pass. Difficult to turn back. He continued anyway. And he drove down the street only to discover that the, the alley was indeed blocked by a fallen tree. And as he predicted, it took a while for him to turn his truck around. And when he finally got back to the entrance, he noticed the second sign. It read, I told you so. <laughs> Put 
me in that new house. I need him to fix me up with that new woman. I need him to work it out so I can be with that man. We want God to give, give, give for what we give him. Well, well, well. Oh, have a hard time giving him Sunday morning, amen. Well, I'm reminded of several key scriptures that should help us and help to guide our thinking in our lives. Corinthians says, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Galatians says, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in sinful nature, rather serve one another. Again, Galatians says, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians once more says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And Matthew says, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. These two commandments are the greatest. If we love God, first of all, then love our fellow human beings we won't go wrong. Amen. Instead of being self-centered, we should be spirit-centered. We should think more about him than we think about ourselves. Be more spiritually minded than worldly or fleshly minded. If we set our minds on scripture, prayer, praising, and serving, we'll all have a better new year. Amen. And finally, in the new year, we must be thankful. Our text reads, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be thankful in Christ. Yeah. Living a grateful life will keep us on the straight and narrow. People who are not aware of their blessings are not thankful. Instead, they're always looking for more. Nearly 70% questioned in the Associated Press poll said people are more ruder and uncivil than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Well, Peggy Newfield, the founder and president of Personal Best, said the generation that came of age in the 80s and 90s are now parents who do not stress the importance of manners, such as opening the door for ladies, a whopping 93% uh, in the Associated Poll faulted parents for failing to teach their children well. Mm. Are you rude and uncivil? I hope not. Are you quick to be polite in action and speech? Sometimes I find myself forgetting to say thank you to someone for something they did, and later I whip myself up for it. Shame on me for being so forget, forget and unpolite. But what about being rude to God? Would we ever be rude to Him? Well, when we fail to express proper thanks and gratitude, isn't that being rude? And to Him, who we owe everything, we don't say thank you, isn't that being rude? Well, five year old boy said grace at the family dinner table. He said, Dear God, thank you for these pancakes. <laughs> when he concluded, his parents asked why he thanked God for pancakes since they were having chicken. He smiled and said, Well, I thought I'd see if he was paying attention to me tonight. <laughs> Believe me, brothers and sisters, God paid very good attention to us. When we pray, 
and when we don't pray. Yeah. When we praise him and when we don't praise him. Yeah. God is always paying attention. Yeah. A psalmist said, praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit, who yeah. forgives all your sin and heals all your diseases. Dr. Dale Robbins writes, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems. But I've come to realize that they have a lot of problems because they complain. Complaining doesn't change anything or make the situation better. It amplifies frustration, spreads discontent and discord, and can invoke an invitation uh, to the devil to cause havoc in our lives. Amen. Complaining will make you miserable. Mm -hmm. You might have a problem, but you start complaining about it, you'll feel worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 That child won't act right, I don't know what to do with him. You already feel bad about it, and then you start thinking about it. Yes. And you think about it some more, that child, that child. Uh -huh. After a while, you're just miserable and frustrated. And you don't know how you got there, but you took your own self down the road. <laughs> David said, I complained that my spirit was overwhelmed. And Philippians says, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure and children of God, without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe. Brothers and sisters, be positive. A positive, thankful person is a great witness in this dark world. We only shine when we are thankful. Our light shines for the Lord when we are thankful, when we live it and express it. I'd much rather hear someone saying things like, bless the Lord, thank the Lord, praise the Lord, than to hear them complain. First Thessalonians said, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I am convinced that a grateful person, a thankful person, will live a better life and will be blessed with a better life. Do you want a better life in the new year? Be polite to God. Be quick to praise Him. Thank Him. Every little blessing you receive, thank Him. Yeah. Some, someone has said, last year when I called my parents to wish them a happy new year, my dad answered the phone. He said, Dad, what's your new year's resolution? He said, to make your mother as happy as I can all year. And he answered proudly. And then mom got on the phone. And I said, what's your resolution, mom? And she said, to see that your dad keeps his resolution. <laughs> God will certainly like to see us keep our resolution. He knows that the, that way we'll be blessed. Walking with him and doing things his way is the way to be blessed. If in this new year we're careful, careful about how we live and careful about the testimony we give, if in this new year we're thoughtful, thoughtful enough to stop and think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, if in this new year we do these things, blessings are in store for you. Do you recognize God has some blessings just for you? Got your name written on it? All packed up and ready to be delivered?
mercy. Amen. So we, we're in a new year. And, and we can celebrate and rejoice in the fact that we're here because God did not promise us this day. Right. It was just grace. That's right. Grace shown on you. We got you up this morning, grace. What's going to take care of you in 2020? Grace. What's going to give you the victory? Grace. So in the new year, oh, brothers and sisters, we need to take these three steps and use them all year long. When somebody gets in your face, just remember and think on God. You know, Reverend Clay, you all know her, she's one of my daughters yeah. in the ministry. She had a saying, she said, think on Jesus as her favorite line. Think on Jesus. Well, that's a good line. Yeah. In 2020, we need to think on Jesus. Yeah. You know, on the job, mm. when that person worked your last nerve. That nasty attitude don't want to treat you right or undermine you. Yeah. Think on Jesus. You know, when you get home, you forget that you a Christian. Because somebody gets under your skin and, 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 and the color comes out on you. Well, think on Jesus. Amen. <laughs> When you're driving down the street, <laughs> and if you in Newark in particular, and you drive down the street, and folks jump out in front of your car and look at you like you're wrong, and you want to say something, think on Jesus. <laughs> And when your money's showing, oh my, and the bills are due, and you got no excuse to give to the bill collector, but that's a good time to think on Jesus. But if you think on him as you go through this year, how blessed is your life going to be? If I ask you to stand, if you know God brought you through a difficult crisis last year, how many could stand? Amen. Amen. How many had to face health challenges this year? Amen. God made a way.